All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast here with your host, Richard Fu from richardfu.com. And today, guys, I have a little, I don't even know if I can call her a little, a bundle ball of joy and happiness right here. She's got so much energy. And the moment I jumped on the call, she was like, oh my God, there's a doorbell here. And it's like, oh, what? Yes, me at the door. And I'm excited to have her on. Her name is Maura Sweeney. She is the ambassador of happiness. She helps people feel happy inside and out. And I'm excited to bring her on to talk about happiness because so often when we ask people, you know, what is it that you really want out of life? They just say, I just want to be happy. But we don't, we, how many times have we you know, fallen off the track from getting there? And so I'm excited to have her on to help guide us through that. So guys, please welcome Maura to the show. Maura, good to have you on. Thank you so much, Richard. I already forgot about the doorbell. I thought that was so cute. Who <laughs> knew that Zoom has its own doorbell? So uh, innovative. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited to have you on and just, I don't know, the moment I came in, we've just started building this connection more and I'm excited to learn more about how you help people and what you do. So for the people who haven't heard about you, share a bit more with us, Maura, please. All right. I would love to simplify by saying that I live by a certain mantra and I use that mantra and share it over a series of different types of um, distribution channels. But here's my mantra live happy from the inside out. Meaning, if you really want to find your happiness and your sense of authenticity and purpose in life, do it first from within and then bring it out into the open. So that's my basic message. Believe it or not, Richard, I have been preparing for this for a half a century, which is hysterical. <laughs> Imagine being a little preschooler and everybody's saying, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And um, some people are saying, well, you know, I want to be a nurse or I want to be a teacher or I want to be an astronaut or I, you know, whatever. I want to be president. I grew up wanting to travel the world, make new friends around the world. I was absolutely taken up with the written word, the typewriter back then. I thought, oh, what is this when you could actually put something to print and other people are going to read it? So basically, I wanted to be this happiness or good news ambassador where I could meet and greet people around the world, even those I never met. So here I am fast forward after going through university, going halfway through um, law school. I had a corporate career. I had a daughter. Uh, who I homeschooled. I helped my husband build a business. I've done all these things. And here I am in my 50s doing what I was always meant to do at just the right time, I would say, in the um, cosmic timing of things around the globe. I help people find their happiness and find their peace. So I'll answer this one little thing when you said, like, what is it that I do? I am the trademarked ambassador of happiness, but I'm a podcaster. Mm -hmm. I'm a blogger. I'm on Huffington Post, um, in addition, to, of course, to having my own website and being in other places as well. Mm -hmm. I have over 200 quick videos that invite people to think about their own values and what it is that makes them happy. I have books. I have a great new e-course. And I also do interviews with people like you. Mm -hmm. And I do public speaking on a national and international level. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. But the whole thing that I do all revolves around that simple message that I got when I was a preschooler. If you want to be happy, if you want to be your bigger, brighter, more authentic self, you're going to find it only one way. And that is you start from within and then you step out instead of running after everything out there, trying mm -hmm. to find your place and always finding out that it's not going to work. <laughs> Amazing. And talk us through that whole journey then more of like, how did you tap into finding out that the happiness for you has to come out from here first. Cause I'm, I'm guessing there are times where you didn't, right? That's why we, we go out and we go get a corporate job or maybe we go do something else. We don't do things that we don't love, but we do it because we think we have to. So talk us through your journey and what triggered you. What was the tipping point where you finally realized, you know what, I got to stop doing things for other people, other uh, chasing things. And that just got to be for me. Well, you know, I, I already hinted at it, which was that even as a preschooler, I understood that happiness came from within. And let me say it this way. Mm -hmm. The last person we usually check with on things because society doesn't teach us to is ourself. It's like, ooh, get a little bit of time by yourself and say, how do I feel about this situation? How do I feel about this conversation or what these people are doing? How do I feel about... Um, this value system or this career. But as a little girl, I was very keenly aware of the fact that 
I could see adults and those around me all clamoring for attention from everybody else. And as a preschooler, I remember thinking, but doesn't anybody care about what's going on on the inside of the meaning, the person on the inside? It's like we literally ignore it. So my story was starting out that way, Richard, and yet going through an upbringing that was in many ways very contrary to my personality. I was a free spirit. I wanted to dance and play with my friends outside. Um, I wanted to wear cute dresses. And surprisingly, back in the day when girls still wore dresses, <laughs> I ended up being very carefully groomed for what? Until I was in my 20s to become an attorney. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that except that I didn't want to become one. It, the family decided this is what I was going to be, but it was more than that. It was the color clothing I wore. It was the type of clothing I wore. It was the fact that even though I wanted to learn how to dance, instead I was going to learn how to play the piano. And I wanted to be outdoors, but I was inside. I wanted to stay up late and, and just be together with other people, and I was in pajamas at 4.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> so what it was for me was this real disconnect between who I was on the inside, and then being on the outside, this pleaser, this conformer, doing everything that either my family told me I was supposed to do, or teachers told me, or everything that appeared to be a designed a certain way for success or for acceptability. And that, by the way, you know, Richard, you're growing up during a different era. You came from another country, but it's all the same process because sometimes we could have people, let's say, um, like the Latino community. And maybe the parents bring up their kids to say, look, don't expect much in life because this is the kind of people we are. We're always going to be serving other people. Mm -hmm. In my case, it was like, well, Maura, you're going to have to be a lawyer because this is what your grandfather was. And anything less than that will disappoint us. Mm -hmm. So it works that way. And in my case, it was the disconnect that by the time I was 23, I was halfway through law school, I couldn't get out of my seat to get into my car and drive to law school. I couldn't do it another day because it was like carrying a corpse on my shoulder and trying to live two lives at the same time. And the more I tried living a life that was going to give me a 40-year career in a northern New Jersey, New York area when I wanted to live in Florida all my life for a profession that was going to require so much of me that really didn't speak for me. Richard, I just couldn't get out of my chair one day. Not only could I not get out of my chair, but I couldn't even open my mouth. It was like I literally couldn't go another day living the fake life. Mm -hmm. That was an incredible moment. It was like, now what do I do? Now what do yeah. I do? And I really had to step off. I took a permanent leave of absence from law school. And then I'm thinking, okay, I know what I don't want to be. What do I want to be? Because that my only training was geared for that one thing. Yeah. So if that answers your question, that was my that was my sort of like moment of truth at 23 years old. Wow. The Thank you for sharing that. I mean, like, it sounds like obviously you say it's in a magical moment now when we look back at it. But at that point in time, it would have been like the scariest moments of your life, right? And yes. Talk us through that. I mean, like for the people who are at that point, who are at that crossroad where they're like. Maura, I've spent so many years in this corporate world and I'm like doing well and that, but like I'm not happy, right? And then they want to make that shift. And so what, what would you advise them? And, and how did you advise yourself, I guess, through that time period? You know, I'm so glad you're asking the question this way because it is a universal question, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. who are we for real? And if we're living a life that's sort of fake, what do we do? The farther down that road we get, the more dead we feel or the more like we feel like we're pulling things, you know, like a ball and chain with us. But the fear is there to say, oh, what's my second act? Here's my first thing I would say, Richard, mm -hmm. if you don't do it, nobody's going to do it for you. <laughs> Although there are some people that get fired from their job, right? Or mm -hmm. they get thrown out of something. But you ultimately, whoever the you is that's listening tonight, today, they are the ones that have to make the decision. And I know like in my case, was it frightening? Yes, because it was not just my parents and all that I was 
formulated and formed to be. But I was newly married. I had a mother-in-law who was convinced that I wanted to get married to her son so that he could take care of me. Now think about this. You see the other part of it? I was a very independent woman, never planned on being taken care of by anyone. But in her mind, I could hear her thinking, oh, of course she gets married. And then she leaves law school because she wants to hang on. Mm. And so think about this from anybody's point of view. You have to deal with all of the um, I would say all the static, mm. the naysayers, and all the reasons inside your head that want to keep you where you are, even though you may feel like you're dying in the process. Mm. But the flip side of it is, if you do choose internally to give yourself that permission to step out, you're really putting yourself into an adventure. And the adventure is the adventure of you. You'll never know what you can do. You'll never know what you can find. And you'll never even know what you're made of until you give yourself that permission and the freedom. And people don't realize oftentimes we could find a hundred reasons to keep ourselves where we are. But let's say there's somebody that is listening mm -hmm. and they feel like, okay, I've got several things I can't get out of right now. Mm -hmm. But here's what I would say as a... Um, maybe as an interim step, take 10% of your life, take 5% of your life and find within that five or 10% the part of your life that's important to you. And then find ways to live out of it, to express it, to pursue it, whether it's a hobby, an interest, something new you want to learn, um, something you, you want to pay forward to and find even small slices because life is different. You know, here I am, this has taken me a long time to get where I am, but mm -hmm we can still take small small steps along the way so that we're still doing maybe those things we feel like we need to right now, mm -hmm. but then we're still giving ourselves a portion of, of time and space where we are allowing our inside happiness to find expression. And the more we do it, the more empowered we get. Mm, and more wow. confident. Such wise advice, Maura, and I love it because... <laughs> Like seriously, like this is what I tell my clients too. It's like, you know, it's all about the inches, not the miles. You know, everyone like is, makes a big deal. Like, Look at this. I quit my job more and all this stuff. It's, 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 now, now what do I do? Yeah. And, and then they freak out. And then they, what happens? Like a, maybe half a year later, a year later, they're back in another job because they weren't ready. You know, they didn't build those foundations. And I love what you're saying here is like, you know, find that 10, 5% in your life that, you know, you, you, you think you don't know much about, but you want to explore it. You know, like people will go and learn art or learn how to dance and those kind of things. And so talk us through this. I mean, talk us through if someone who's, who's just feeling lost and then like even more, I don't even know what I like. What would you advise them? And you wonder how many people are like that? Yeah. Truly. <laughs> because here's why. When we're really little, who tells us what to do? Our parents or our, or our sitters, right? Mm -hmm. Sit this way, hold your spoon this way, talk this way. And we learn from a really early age what to do to please people on the outside. And they're all our guides. And from there at home, we go to our school teachers. They tell us what to do, right? Mm -hmm. Then we go maybe through university. They tell us what to do and how to be approved. Then we go work for a boss. They tell us what to do. The government tells us what to do. So... Um, here's what you do to undo it, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd say this to everybody because it's really simple. You know, most of the time we're busy thinking up here, and this is all of the social programming. Mm -hmm. But if you do this, did you ever hear that wherever you put your hand, that's where your thoughts go? If you put mm -hmm. your hand right here, close your eyes, and give yourself a little time and space, and allow yourself to survey your life. And go back, and it could be yesterday, like yesterday you were doing something great, or it could be when you were a really little child before the world started telling you, you can't do it that way. And just think about things you did and the moment you land on a thought or a thought picture or a song, it could be anything that all of a sudden you want to smile with, remember that place and space. And you know why? That's part of the real you. It's part of your soul. It's part of that unspoken personality that's always been with you in your life, but you never gave it a voice. You never said, what do you think about all this that's going on? As soon as people do that, Richard, it's like picking up 
a very simple thread of your own life. It's your soul. It's your soul that knows what makes you happy. It's your soul that knows what it really relates to. Your soul that knows what talents it wants to pursue or what innate curiosities it has. But do you see how if we are so accustomed to being nothing more than receptors of an outside world that's constantly vying for our attention and our approval, we have really closed off that personage within us. And that's why I go back to living happy from the inside out. I have seen people I'm going to tell you this. About a year ago, I was in Croatia, and I was speaking at a uh, an international conference, and someone came up to me after I gave this same little experience and said, I can't wait till I go home and find out what the answer is to this thing. Like, what was I thinking about when I was a child? Well, anyway, she comes in the next day, and this was someone who worked in a government capacity in some ministry. She came back the next day, and she said, Maura, you know what I used to do as a little child? She said, I would cut out dolls, like paper dolls. You don't even hear people do that anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, I would constantly move them around. She said, I went to bed last night and I, all I asked was, what did that mean and how does that relate to today? Now here I told you, she works in government ministry. Mm -hmm. She said, Maura, I realize the connection. She said, I know where people belong in organizations. She said, I've been trying to come up with a new organization, putting people in the rightful places so that when they work together, they could come up with something new in government that will help advance a cause. And she said, here I am looking back for inspiration. And I could suddenly see it that when I was a little kid, I was busy cutting out paper dolls and moving them around into different spaces. She's a, she is like a personnel organizer and a visionary for where people belong to collectivize them and come up with better solutions. Now, see how those little things work? Mm, so. And I was somebody who fell in love with a typewriter in my grandfather's legal office, but instead of watching his law, I was watching the legal secretary thinking, what is that machine and what is it doing? And people are going to read that stuff and it's important. And so what do I do today? I use blogs to get the written word, word out that other people read. It's, I was an idea person and I was an outside the box. So do you see by, by going into these little places, we're literally listening to our own soul and the more cues we take from it, and we might have to like play around with it, of course, and figure out, well, what does this mean and how do I use it? But the more we start to tap into that place, I want to tell you, Richard, and for everyone who's listening, the more we do that, the more we tap into our greatness and our finer qualities, and we'll get to a place where we, come and we become a unique expert in a segment that really doesn't look exactly like anyone else. What I do as ambassador of happiness, there is no other one other than me. I made it up and people at UNESCO called me that. So what does it mean for somebody else today that says, you know, I've got two really crazy interests. I don't even know how I put them together. I would say start, start. Take some time each night or get up extra early in the morning or take, you know, an hour on a Saturday, find a meetup group that's doing stuff you're interested in, start getting the vocabulary, start following, start learning. And before you know it, you get happier, you get more empowered and your actual inner identity starts coming out. And there is a great sense of self. And um, people not only need it for themselves and their happiness, but other people need to see it so that they get the message and start doing the same thing for themselves. That's no. a long answer to a short question, but no, no, that's beautiful. I live it and I know it and I've seen other people like that too. And I love it more. I love it. Uh, it's just so, so real. It's so real, but yet so simple. And that's the thing is that, you know, uh, so often we forget what we did when we were kids. Uh, for whatever reason, and we, we ignore that, and then we miss out now on the happiness that we're truly, truly meant to be tapping into, isn't it? Yes. And you know another thing about happiness? This is incredible. I spent um, 10 years in a corporate environment where I was in leadership, setting up branch offices, hiring, developing, you know, uh, mentoring managers, etc. Mm -hmm. I always would find out what people's greatest talents were. I would promote them as the in-house experts. And then everyone knew what their expertise was and everybody learned how to appreciate each other. Mm -hmm. Here's what we noticed is that when people are given opportunities to be their best in whatever area is their area of expertise, you end up 
having so much more levity, you have so much more freedom, and you do better. You actually do better. We had the top office in the country, even though we, we were in a rather a, a smaller market here in the United States, because we did everything through that intrinsic methodology of what is it that you love to do? Come on, step up front and show us what you have. Teach us what you have. And everybody seemed to gain as a result of everybody else's expertise. And we ended up with this internal power that gave us all a collective lift. Mm -hmm. It's really, I was doing this. There are people now at Harvard that do university studies. I lived it and I know it works. Mm -hmm. It really does. Oh, amazing. And not only that, Maura, I know we were talking off air before, is that you actually did a study, didn't you? You did a global poll of, I think I will just call it health happiness. And talk us through this poll and what you've discovered through doing this survey. Okay. Well, we already know that my general theme is live happy from the inside out. So basically it's calling you to authenticity and, and to really become your bigger self and not to give up on those dreams that you had maybe as a child. Mm -hmm. So I feel a certain way and I'm always writing about it. But at one point I thought, well, let me go and do a poll and find out how other people would define happiness, right? So this is very interesting. I have several hundred people um, that, I've, that I have surveyed and I continue to do this on a routine basis. They've been as young as 18. They mm -hmm. have been as old as over 90, as in nine zero. Yeah. Uh, sixty-five percent female, thirty-five percent male. So, if you know of anybody else that wants to do the um, the survey, have them contact me, especially if they're a male. They yeah. came originally from twenty-eight states here in the U.S., and now we're up to twenty-six countries. Wow! They have high school degrees all the way up to PhDs. Now, so think about what that means, right? Think about that in terms of the polling. Almost a thousand people from all these different backgrounds. Five things we really want that would make us happy that it all distilled to. Here's the first one. Mm -hmm. We all want to have healthy relationships. That means less drama in the relationships, number one. Secondly, we want peace of mind. Ah, oh, isn't that simple? Thirdly, we want freedom. Fourth, we want purpose and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And fifth, we want personal confidence. So when people are saying, these are the ways I would define how I feel happy, healthy relationships, peace of mind, freedom, purpose and fulfillment, and personal confidence. And guess what? All of that stuff comes from within. Mm -hmm. It's, do I really like this relationship? Is it making me happy? Or am I hanging around the wrong people that are making me miserable or causing mm -hmm. me to conform myself into somebody I'm not, right? Yeah, yeah. Am I coming home from places and I feel instead of a peace of mind, I'm feeling totally out of peace? And how about this one? You get to purpose and fulfillment. How many people will choose their jobs because, number one, it could be the family told them, society told them, the money looked good, right? How about we lived in a time a couple of decades ago where Americans were being moved all over the place because they were running after money and they would find themselves in some crazy place that they didn't even like, but the money was supposed to make them happy. But the purpose and fulfillment. So when we ask ourselves these questions every day and we keep inching forward toward these as goals, we literally end up feeling happier because we're expressing the real people we are. Mm -hmm. It's universal. Tell me if people didn't live this way, Richard, let me say, if they did start living this way, how many problems that we currently have in the world would go away? How much less stress, how much less fighting, right? How much less drug abuse or over drinking or um, harming other people out of intrinsic fears because we don't even know who we are, or what we are. A lot of it would just go away. Mm. That's the happiness poll. Wow. Wow. And how long have you been running the happiness poll for? It sounds like. Oh, I want to say the past two years. Yeah. Awesome. And then you're just checking in with the same people year on year is it as well? No, you know what it is? I'm constantly getting new contributors. So people will write in or if I'm overseas or if I'm speaking somewhere, I'll hand them a happiness poll. Mm -hmm. And so every time I get one, they just get added to the mix. But the interesting thing is they all five things we all really want. That's pretty much it. So think about this. We are more alike then we are different. And if we really do live from that inner space, like our soul, 
then we would have, we'd be happier, but we would also contribute to a happier world. Mm. Instead of being like the fake out person, <sighs> you know, I want, this is another thing probably worth mentioning. Yeah. Um, you can see behind me, I'm thinking of this, the mirror. Yeah. I did a podcast and a blog a couple of months ago, and it was talking about people who are afraid to look at the person in the mirror. And this was really curious because it started with a conversation after I had spoken to a group that was in transition. And they started saying they were afraid to look in the mirror. And many of them were women. And this is what they said. It had nothing to do with vanity. Like, oh, I don't like my hair today or maybe I have wrinkles. They didn't want to look in the mirror for one reason. They didn't want to look at the eyes looking back at them. And what they realized is that the person looking back at them in the mirror was their soul on the inside. And it was almost like saying, I'm not being true to myself. But when we're willing to look in that in the mirror, when we're looking, willing to look at ourselves, then we could start working on that happy place inside and out mm. and unifying and harmonizing who we are. Wow. So did I knock you over with these long answers to quick questions? <laughs> of course. That's why I'm just giving that taste there. And I love that you brought, bring it up is that, you know, especially the, the mirror thing, because like you know, a lot of the times, even myself, I can be honest here. I like, I just look at myself in the mirror and I don't even look at my eyes, you know, you know other parts, right? I look at like, you know, my face or like, you know, why is that like that? And then, and I don't know, it's like, you bring that up and it's like, hmm, how many times have I looked at myself dead set in the eyes in the mirror? And like, I don't think that much, you know, I don't think that much. And But if you did, it's like you're literally, you can't fool yourself. That's what the whole thing was. And oftentimes without realizing it, we run away from ourselves or we deny our real self on the inside. Hmm. And that's an interesting thing. Um, you know, there was a question I know you sent me some interview questions yeah. or some flows, but I think you asked even a secondary question. I want to bring this up. Yeah. You asked me earlier, like, when was that first aha moment? Like, I got to change my life. And mine was 23. I had another one. Mm -hmm. I mentioned to you that I, um, you know, I've been married for many years. I had this corporate career. Mm -hmm. Then I had a daughter and I ended up homeschooling her while I was helping my husband develop his business. If you were to know me, let's say 10, 12 years ago, you would not really have known it was the same me, and I'll tell you why. I sp spent so much of my time helping other people that I almost became invisible. Mm -hmm. So somebody once said something to me about being afraid, and they said, Maura, you're afraid of who you really are. Now, at the time, I was midlife. My daughter was getting ready to go to college. I could have stayed doing with my husband what we were doing with our business, but it was boring. It was computer sales. <laughs> yeah. And I realized one day, Richard, I was like 45 years old. I thought, oh my gosh, I never knew this. I'm afraid of facing myself. It was a bizarre moment. I thought, this is incredible. I am literally afraid of facing myself. And it was huge for me. And I thought, but see, you give me a challenge and I'll be right there and I'll go for it. I had to come to grips at midlife with what was I going to do with the rest of my life? What was I going to take in the everything past? And was I either going to coast where I was mm -hmm. midlife? We had a nice company. We were doing well financially, but it had no purpose, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm bigger than that. I was always a mind person. And I literally had to say to myself, you're going to keep doing this or you're going to find out what you're made of. And imagine being at midlife and doing it all over again. And I know of many people who have, and I made that choice. I was going to step out at midlife and I was going to set myself a goal to be one of the most influential people in the world. That's crazy. It's bizarre. It's almost stupid, but it was, I, isn't it? It really is. It's like, who the heck do you think you are lady? Right. <laughs> And even to admit it to myself, but it was because I went back to that place as a young child where I believed in a better world and I believed in better people, better relationships, better, better ways in, in, in interacting. And I took everything I always believed in, everything I ever studied, and I still am studying and traveling. You know this, I'm a global traveler and an interviewer. And now all I do is propagate it. I propagate good ideas things that are familiar to all of us, high ideals that make us think higher and better. And here I am. I've probably been interviewed on 150 media outlets. I've been overseas. I've been put on 
on international news as the ambassador of happiness because I've gone to places where people really need this. And I'm like, it's almost like watching, is this really happening to me? <laughs> and so now my message is, that's what I was able to do at midlife and I keep doing it. So what is your question in life? What is the thing you want to do? You don't have to go around the world. You don't have to be an ambassador of happiness or like whatever. But what is that thing you have? Mm. What's that thing that burns inside of you? And guess what? It may be around the block. Mm. It may be something you're doing out of your own house. It may be something you do at the area library. It may be a local initiative you start. That's something within you that you want to birth. Whatever that thing is. If I could do it at midlife, so can you. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Wow. So well said, Maura. And I love it. I love that you brought that up because so often people would just, you know, we do things for other people and we forget about ourselves. And then when it's time to think about ourselves, it's like, hmm, so who is Maura? Who's Richard now? Yes. Yeah. And oh. it's a frightening thing, especially if you never even inquired. Who yeah. am I? Who is that person in the closet that I never opened up? Yeah. But it's also a very freeing thing. Oh my gosh, Richard, it's freeing. It's fun. It's not always easy because mm. you really have to undo a lot of that mental baggage. Mm. Um, but the rewards are so great because it's very expansive. And I think in the process, you get rid of a lot of your fears. Amazing. I'm not going to say thing. You do. <laughs> amazing, Maura. And so, you know, we've got to start wrapping up the show here because this has just been so amazing. It's just so much fun sitting here learning more about happiness with you. And as we start wrapping up here, Maura, we're going to go into our quick fire questions. And I know the answers. <laughs> and the first one we have is our favorite questions, the signature questions, what we call the time travel moment. Oh. Go back, Maura, to any moment in your life and talk to little Maura. Maybe she, her name was Moira, really. And you could tell her one piece of advice back then. When would you go back to it and what would you tell her? You know what? Thank you for asking me. I would tell little Moira, start sooner doing what you want to do and being who you really are. Even if you are timid, start sooner and do it without excuse and be happier sooner. Beautiful, beautiful. Next question I have for you is, you know, as the ambassador of happiness, I'm sure you've studied a lot, you've read a lot of books about happiness. And so if there's absolutely one book, there's a total must read for people here who want to start getting onto that path of becoming more happier for themselves, what book would that be? Such a, for me, that's a really hard question because I read so much and I read a lot of crazy things nobody else does. The only thing that came to mind in this that some people will get and other people won't. It was The Course in Miracles. And the, for only one reason, many people are like, I don't even get it. The big thing in The Course of Miracles is to show you that you are every other person out there. And so whatever's going on inside of you, you wish for the other person. Whatever you see in the other person, you wish for yourself. And it's a very, um, it's a book that brings many dissonant elements in your life together. Mm. Beautiful. We'll add that into the show notes. And one final thing here, Maura, I want to ask you here is this, is it sounds like, you know, with happiness comes a lot of, I guess, finding your purpose, right? And, and living through your purpose. And so what does it look like? Or how would you describe it if someone is on their, you know, their true purpose? What would, what would that be? Oh, first of all, they're being authentic. They're not trying to please anybody, Richard, because that's where we get fearful and that's where we end up being our smaller self. So the thing is, be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. And the more of yourself that you are, especially with grace, not like I'm going to beat you over the head because I want to show you how great I am. It has nothing to do with that. But you be yourself, you will be a greater extension of yourself. You'll be a greater extension of love, of creativity, of power, of uplift, and you will be an inspiration to everybody else around you. So you feel content, you feel worthy, you feel talented, you feel like you do have purpose um, because you're literally living out of it and getting your life out of it. But at the same time, it works in reverse because everywhere you are, you are emitting a signal or an atmosphere to others that says the same thing. You go out and be your best person. You be you, and I will celebrate you at the same time. 
Amazing, Maura, amazing. It's been awesome having you on the show here, Maura. And so before we wrap up here, I mean, is there anything else you want to mention that we didn't get a chance to talk about on the show today? Good question. I was, I'm going to bring it right back to what I just said. Be yourself. I'm going to, I remember one time when I was um, getting moved into management leadership for the first time mm-hmm. and I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready for this. I don't want this position. And the person I was replacing seemed like he was larger than life. Yeah. And he gave me excellent advice. He said, Maura, don't compare yourself with anyone else. Don't compare yourself with me. He said, be yourself. And there's a power that comes from it. It's a personal power that comes from authenticity. And when we could live out of that place, it's like the light within us continues to burn more and more brightly. And when we know that the inside person, that soul, the one whose who's eyeballs look at us in the mirror, is who we are and we're living out of that place, our truth, our purpose, our light, our finest giftings literally brighten not only our world, but they brighten everybody else's. So be you and don't try to be anybody else and you'll be very happy for it. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. So Maura, thank you so much again for jumping on the show and just sharing your wisdom here and bringing more happiness to the world here with our podcast. Thank you so much for jumping on. Thanks, you, Richard. Awesome. And so guys, this wraps up another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast here with the ambassador of happiness herself, Maura Sweeney. And I will know this. I know Maura doesn't want to keep this a secret. This cannot be a secret. So we need to share her message out there. We need to bring it out to the world. We need to bring her message and all the other guests we've had on the show here, their messages out there. So make sure you head on over to iTunes to rate the show. Because, you know, if you felt like it was happy, then give us one star at least. If you felt like it was super, super, super happy, then five stars would be awesome. And of course, guys, you can head on over to richardfood.com to get all the show notes and the resources that Maura has shared here. And finally, guys, go out there, go live with love. Go smash it. And I'll see you again on the next one.